Yo guys, welcome back to another great video. In this video, we're gonna go over creating a box fight map. So what I'm doing right now is loading into my box fight that I created, and we're gonna recreate something just like this. The thing I would do first, go ahead and check out this map. I put the code there at the top for you to check out. Take a moment, pause this video, go into the map, see what we're gonna be creating today. And then we're gonna go ahead and dive in piece by piece, creating a pregame lobby and a box fight. If this tutorial feels a little complicated for you, go ahead and check out in the description below Fortnite Creative for Beginners. It's a great place to start before diving into this tutorial. And as you can see here, we have a pregame lobby going right into the main game. We have a countdown with both sides ready to go. I'm gonna show you how to create two teams and how to get everything set up. All right, guys, you know I have been a long time content creator. If you have just a moment to hit that like button and maybe even subscribe, that would mean a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and select an island type. In this island type here, we're gonna go with something very small. It is a box fight map. So the grid island, that green one right there, that's gonna be perfect for our needs for creating this box fight. All right, so now what you're gonna do is name your island. Right now, I'm just gonna call it best box fight, but take a moment, name your island what you want it to be. The good news is you can change this at any point, so do not worry about it. Just choose something to get started. All right, we got our map all set. We're loading in, and now we're gonna go ahead and get started by getting the essentials down of what we need to make this BR great. Just take a moment, browse through all of these galleries, choose the type of theme you want your box fight to be. There are so many themes nowadays in Fortnite Creative, it is ridiculous. So you can go with a pirate theme using the Pirate Cove Gallery. You can create a princess box fight if you'd like. I don't know if I've seen many of those. All right, so let's get building. Now I'm gonna use that Art Deco Black Gallery. I'm gonna choose this floor piece. I think it's really, uh, a nice piece. We're gonna go ahead and make sure this box fight is five tiles in width and four tiles in depth. So guys, make sure it's set up just like this. Now what I'm doing is I'm deleting the middle roll and this is just something you don't have to do it. It's just, I think, pretty on the eyes. We're gonna go ahead and create just a little bit of a breakup in the center there because that's where the wall's gonna be that separates the 8v8, there, you can have up to eight people on each side doing this box fight. And so that barrier is gonna be in the middle there. It just separates both teams better. Now we're gonna go ahead and choose a wall. Uh, this could be from any gallery that you're working on. It does not need to be the same gallery that I am using right now. We're gonna go ahead and choose a wall, start placing it down. So once you've chosen what you want, you'll go through and figure out what you're gonna do. Now I'm putting another choice here. If you notice, I had see-through windows. Now this is an option if you don't wanna be able to see out of the box fight. That's a very easy option to use. Now if you do the see-through windows like I'm doing, you may wanna actually build a second floor before building your box fight. Otherwise, see the green floor here? When we put a barrier in, you're gonna see that ugly green floor on the bottom. So we don't wanna see that ugly green floor in our box fight map, especially if we're gonna use windows or any way of looking out. So if you notice here, what I'm doing is I'm just duplicating the floor from the bottom up here. You only have to do this if you're using pieces where you can look out the windows. Now, if you can look out the windows and you want them to have a cool view of space using the nebula barrier or something like that, you'll wanna build up a little bit higher than where the grid is, which I'm doing right now. And now we're gonna just keep building, going up and creating that second floor, using a different material on the second level here just to break it up a bit so it's not the same thing for each level. That way it just creates this cool, nice looking room. As you're seeing put together here, there we have a ceiling. We can all use just that same piece for the entire ceiling. And guys, look at that. In the matter of minutes, we created a box fight. Now we have to actually create the mechanics and do all that exciting stuff, but we did it. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and choose the barrier device. We're gonna take that barrier device and we're gonna go ahead and place it in the middle, but on the bottom floor. We're not gonna put it in the main box fight area. We're not gonna do that just yet. All right, enable on phase always. Yes, we wanna make sure that we see the nebula always barrier material. Nebula, that's what I chose. You could choose something different. Zone shape, bo hollow box, super important. Will not work if it's not on hollow box. Barrier depth, width 10, 10, height 30. One other very important thing, rename all of your devices because we're gonna be using a new system. 
where we're gonna go ahead and event bind things. And if you don't know the name of devices, it's gonna get very confusing the more complicated things get. One last thing to note, you'll still see the barrier floor is showing, which is pretty ugly. So you just wanna go ahead and grab the barrier and raise it up half a tile, just like so. And that will go ahead and give you that beautiful view you're looking for. And you can now see here, it looks like a beautiful galaxy outside looking up, down, around, no matter where you look, just gives that nice textural layer. All right, so we're gonna go to my island and change the time of day. Um, if you notice, even with the barrier, time of day does make a difference. You can see different coloring, different hues of light. So I would say play around with the time of day to get the desired look that you're looking for. Now guys, this is gonna be very important for you to do these steps. Go over to tools and at the bottom, you're gonna see event system and upgrade devices. Now, if you do not see event system or upgrade devices, it's possible you're watching this tutorial later on when this has already been converted for you. If you don't see those options, don't worry about it, just ignore this step. If you do see these options, go ahead and hit both of them. First, event system, we're gonna convert. So go ahead and click on the convert button and go ahead and convert your island using the new event system. You'll see here, it'll tell you about direct binding. Yes, we're gonna commit to that. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other convert. Now this convert, will not only convert, but it will reload the island and kick you out. But it's basically saying, if you convert this, this can screw things up on your map. This is a brand new map, so that's fine. I would highly suggest being careful about doing this on an existing map. So let's go ahead and confirm, and you'll notice I get kicked from my island, and we're gonna go ahead and jump right back in. This gives us access to new devices. Once again, if you don't see any convert buttons, that just means that you already have all the new stuff, and this tutorial might just be a little bit out of date. All right, next up, we're gonna go to devices and grab the HUD message device. This is going to be a great countdown device for us to put in so the player knows when the box fight begins. So we're gonna place that down and we're gonna go through each of these settings. All right, so message, we're gonna say ready. We're gonna do kind of like a ready, set, go type of thing here. So make sure that's set to ready. Make sure message recipient is set to all because you want everyone to see it. Time from round start, you wanna say one second. So one second from round start is when this will activate. Display time, one second. We only want it on the screen for one second. Textile, bold orange. We really want people to see the countdown. We wanna see the ready, set, go. Play sound, I chose round countdown. You can choose whatever you want for this. Placement, top, center. And once again, we talked about renaming your devices. So for this one, I'm gonna name it HUD message device ready. All right, I want you to grab a copy of that HUD message device, place it down, and then all you're gonna do is change two things. You're gonna write the word set instead of ready, and then you're gonna change it from time from round start, two seconds. So instead of one second, it's gonna say two seconds. And then once again, we're gonna go ahead and rename this one HUD message device set. Now create a copy of that, place it down again, and all you're gonna do is change set to go and time from round start from two seconds to three seconds. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and rename the device, HUD message device go. And that's it. You did a ready, set, go countdown timer. All right, go to devices again, and now we're gonna grab a timer device. Go ahead and take that timer device and place it down. Once you've gone ahead and placed it down, we're gonna go ahead and adjust some of these settings. All right, duration. We're gonna make this a four second timer. Timer name, countdown, start at game start. Yes, we want the timer to start at game start. Activating team, any, allowed class, any. Just set those to any to make sure everyone sees this countdown. Visible during game, hidden, we don't want people to see it. You can make the color whatever you want, that's not important. Show on HUD, no, that's very important. Timer label and style, doesn't matter. Last but not least, you wanna go ahead and rename your timer device. In this case, we're gonna call it timer device and then wall. So we made that timer and now we're gonna go ahead and put down a barrier that's going to disappear when the timer runs out. So we're gonna to go to devices. We're gonna go ahead and choose the barrier device again, but this time we're creating a barrier that blocks the team one from team two, making sure they don't fight each other until the countdown timer is finished. So go ahead and place that barrier right dead center in the middle of your box fight map. Then we're gonna go ahead and adjust the settings. Make sure enable on phase is set to gameplay only. Barrier material is gloss black. You can change that to whatever material you want. 
Depth is one tile, width is four tiles, and height is two tiles. So make sure that that's copied just as is. And remember friends to rename all of your devices. In this case, I'm just gonna call this barrier device wall, and uh, this will make more sense in a minute. And that's pretty much it, you'll go ahead and confirm. There you go, you got that beautiful wall separating team one and team two. All right, it is now time to bind two devices together. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna bind our timer device together with our barrier device. So we're gonna head over to the new event binding tab, which is the fourth one over. And once you head over there, you're gonna see two options on this barrier device wall, enable and disable. So we're gonna choose disable because on start of game, it's gonna be enabled. So we're gonna choose the disable tab, then we're gonna select device. So basically we're saying, which device is going to disable this barrier? Well, we're gonna choose timer device wall, which is that one we named earlier in this tutorial. Then we're gonna go ahead and select an event. So in that event, we're gonna say on success. So choosing on success is basically saying once timer is complete, disable. Now event binding can be a little confusing. So let's just walk through this one more time and we'll only do this once so you get it. So I'm saying disable when receiving from the timer device wall. And when that timer is successfully done, disable the barrier. Hopefully that makes sense. And now you're gonna see here, you have the countdown working, you have the wall up, and then right when it says go, the wall disables. That's exactly what we just did with event binding. All right, head over to devices and select the team settings and inventory device right there. Once you've gone ahead and grabbed that device, go ahead and place it down. And we're gonna go ahead and set up the rest of our map. Now this is gonna be super simple. Now go over to the weapons tab and choose the AR and the shotgun that you want for your box fight. You can make this any weapon you want. In this case, however, I am choosing a blue AR. All you have to do is hover over the device and then select the gun. And once it drops in, it will automatically go in the top there, just like so. The other gun I love to put in my map is a Epic Pump Shotgun. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in as well. And when you drop that in, it just will pop into the team inventory and settings device. The last thing I'm gonna put in there is a flopper from consumables. And there's actually one more thing on top of that. The final thing to make this box fight perfect we're gonna to go to the very top there and we're gonna choose wood. We're gonna grab 500 wood. Now for the wood, we're gonna go ahead and click on the 500 wood and then drop all. You're gonna drop all that wood into the device as well. Now all four of those things are in the team inventory and settings device. And that's pretty much it. You're gonna hit start game and every player is automatically going to get everything you placed in. That's the blue AR, the pump shotgun, the flopper and 500 mats. Now you will notice we have limited ammo and we have unlimited mats. That's a problem. So we need to go into our settings now and fix all of that. All right, what we're gonna do now is go over game settings and I'm gonna go over this as quickly as possible, but I wanna give you an explanation for each of these so you understand how all of this works. We're gonna start with my island and then under game, we're gonna go to voice chat, make sure that's set to all so people can hear each other talk. The next thing we're gonna focus on is max players. I set mine to 16, that's eight on one side, eight on the other, that's an 8v8. Teams of two, we want there to be a 8v8, so you need teams of two. Team size dynamic, that tells Epic to split the teams evenly for you. Matchmaking type, flexible teams. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and choose that if you are going to publish this map. That is the only way that Epic will go ahead and let you put it in discovery. It needs to be set to flexible teams. I may skip talking over a few of these. If I do that, just means that you should copy the settings, but there is nothing to really explain. Next one, time limit. I set it for four minutes. Basically, if people keep boxing up and you can't get to the person, the game has to end at some point. So the four minute timer, just make sure the game ends at some point if nobody wins. Last standing ends game. This is very important. This says the last person standing wins the game. Super important for a box fight. Make sure that's set to on. Join in progress, spawn on next round. Very important on that one as well. You want them to be able to join the next game, but not the current game. Now guys, there are definitely more advanced options I could be turning on here. The reason I'm not is I'm trying to keep this very simple. 
So if you're noticing things and you're a more advanced user and you're seeing I'm not turning certain things on that would be helpful, well, that's just because I'm trying to create a very basic box fight for this tutorial. Infinite ammo I did turn on because I don't want people worrying about ammo. There's no way to get more ammo. And that's why I chose guns like a blue AR and a purple pump. They're not super fast. Infinite consumables off. I don't want you to have uh, infinite floppers. That's a little too much. Infinite resources off. I only want you to have 500 mats. Once you run out, you better be good at shooting because you're out and that makes the rounds go faster. Now heading over to My Island and UI. All right, what we're gonna do now is create a pre-game lobby. Now I did pick some uh, similar items from the box fight. We're using that same floor and uh, you can just copy what I'm doing here or create your own. The really important thing to a pre-game lobby is to put up a barrier so people can't escape the pre-game lobby and to add player spawners. And as you can see here, I time-lapsed my design to go pretty quick so you can see it all put together. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you the settings for pregame lobby. Now we're gonna go over to devices, grab another barrier device. This will be our third barrier device. We'll go ahead and place that down there. Go ahead and set it to always being on. Now this one will be static. It won't do anything except being pretty. We're gonna go ahead and make it nebula. Once again, hollow box, very important. And here we're gonna to have to adjust the settings to find out exactly the length we want it to be. We built on the floor again, so we're gonna have to make sure this is exactly the right length. And there it is, seven by seven. That's exactly what I need for mine. Uh, yours may be a little bigger, a little smaller, depending on how you built your pregame. And then you'll see there, we have a perfectly encompassed barrier where nobody can get out of your pregame lobby. This is the most important part of the pregame lobby, the player spawn pad. Go ahead and drop that player spawn pad into the map just like so. The only setting you need to change, visible in game, off. Once you've done that, go ahead and place up to 16 copies in your pregame lobby. And that's it. All you have to do now is freshen up the aesthetic of the pregame lobby, maybe add a little more detail, and then we're ready to play this map. Everything should be working perfectly. You should have a finished box fight, and I hope you enjoy it. Guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will keep creating more. Let me know in the comments below what other tutorials you'd like to see me create. Until next time.